Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Democracy and Development, confronting a central ethical dilemma of international development with lessons from Rwanda and the Gambia. In fact, this is going to be the final installment of that series, at least for now, where we're going to be looking at the last of the objections to the Wahale method of development. Those are the Boko Haram objections and responses to Wahale development. If you haven't checked out the previous videos in this series, it is highly recommended that you do so for some of the context moving forward. So, the final type of objection I will examine here I have dubbed Boko Haram. Haram means sinful or prohibited. Boko is the colloquial shortening of Elimin Boko, meaning fake education, used by Muslim communities in Nigeria, Niger, and Cameroon to refer to colonial education imposed by the British. Boko Haram is then translated as Western education is sinful, Boko being the colloquial shortening of fake education or Western education, and Haram being is sinful or prohibited, and used in the name of an Islamist militant group in northeastern Nigeria, infamous for abducting hundreds of girls from a school in Chibok. In this context, I use it to represent two objections to a holiday development that argue that education and sharing of stories in and of itself is wrong. Not to reference the militant group or anything related to that, simply to use the name and the idea that sharing stories or education itself is problematic or wrong. The first objection imagines a different scenario to the original dilemma. Instead of the community democratically deciding to do something unethical, they decide that they don't want the education that you are offering. They don't want your tools or stories. They want you to leave. Perhaps they think you are corrupting their children, or perhaps they think you are teaching something which conflicts with their religion or their beliefs. Maybe they don't want to get rid of you, but they don't want your help. What should you do? The opponent where the proponent of this objection might claim that you can't use the tools of Wahale development to resolve this problem, since inherently it's those very tools that the community is objecting to. So if you respect their wishes, you can't do Wahale development. And if you do Wahale development, you can't respect their wishes, by definition. In order to resolve this issue, though, I would argue that we can use all three elements of Wahale framework to deal with this problem. The first and the most important is that any point anyone can walk away. If a community or a country does not want the help of an external group or individual, they must be allowed to say no. To force development on a group would not merely be ineffective, it would be a violation of their rights of participation in democracy. In the face of the community that does not want your help, you can use Wahale development to walk away, to do exactly what the community wants you to, and let them maintain their autonomy. However, the hope is that, if the other two principles of Wahale framework are followed, this situation will never arise. If the goal of your exchange is to build a relationship, then the last thing you or they would want to do is end that relationship. If by educating you are telling stories and offering tools which can be taken or left, no one should feel the need to force you out or to force you to stop, even if they disagree with you, since you're not requiring that they take anything. However, that does not make this situation impossible. Frequently, people can feel threatened by simply the introduction of new ideas or new cultures to a system that may be shaky or may have shaky justification for its existence. But this situation is still not a dilemma, since the only ethical choice is to stop your intervention until the community wants you back. Wahale development, in one of its central principles, has the piece of anyone can walk away. And so, when faced with that, you use Wahale development to do exactly what the community wants, and avoid the dilemma. The last objection comes from both the position of Boko Haram, but also the position of the isolationist. This is the claim that all Western education is inherently biased. There are implicit values which are taught and emphasized, such as individualism or liberalism, while collectivism or traditionalism are demonized. In educating people, the objection might claim, we are not trying to share tools with them, really. We're trying to convert them to our way of thinking. Such an objection might hold for the poor practitioner of Wahale development, but it does not that does not come willing to bargain or share. Bargaining involves giving and taking, 
In order for those around you to truly accept your ideas, you need to try to accept some of theirs. If you want them to listen to your stories, you should listen to theirs. This is a two-way street, and it will fail if your goal is to change others rather than to learn and build a relationship together. As soon as it becomes a process where one party is no longer respected as an equal partner, not only will the inherent good of participatory development be reduced, the endeavor's chances of success will decrease. Both from, once again, a teleological and an instrumentalist perspective, this is not a good path to take. This is just kind of strawmanning Wahale development. If you are there to bargain and share, you're not saying that liberalism is correct or individualism is correct. You're saying that that's something my culture does, and I want to learn about what your culture does. One should, instead of teaching a community that democracy or individualism are good, teach them that democracy and individualism are things that you like or that they're part of your tradition and where you're from. The community will understand you better and open up to you more because they have not closed off the possibility of learning about the way that they do things. Even if you believe that democracy is the only morally right way to do things, you'll not convince anyone by dogmatically asserting they are wrong. The only way to change hearts and minds is to allow for the possibility that yours could change too. Or, to put this in meta-ethical terms, you do not need to be a cultural relativist to accept that your views on what is right and wrong might be incorrect, and to humbly seek new information and experiences to correct them. You can believe that there is an objective right and wrong, while still being skeptical of the claim that you know what that objective right and wrong is. On the other hand, it's quite dogmatic and dangerous to be so certain that you have the correct morality that you're unwilling to accept the opportunity to learn. And it'll harm your development practice, and it's not a part of Wahale development. That is the end of our series on democracy and development. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for anyone that made it all the way to the end. This is, as I said at the beginning, a series that was important for me to do. It's something that brings together both the work I do with philosophy as well as the work I do out in the world. And I think it's important for philosophers to try to connect the principles and ideas that they espouse, especially in applied ethics, to the practitioners that are doing the work in the field and see if those ideas can be applied in a real way, what people and practitioners in the field can learn from them and what the philosophers in their ivory towers and armchairs can learn from what's actually happening in the world. I hope you enjoyed the series. Watch this video and more here at carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.